Hello guys, in this video we will see development of lateral surface problem. The question will be like this. Develop the lateral surface of the truncated hexagonal prism, edge of base 20 mm and axis 50 mm long, rest with its base on the HP, such that one of its rectangular faces is parallel to VP. It is cut by a plane perpendicular to VP, inclined at 45 degrees to HP and passing through the right corner of the top face of the prism. In this question, we can see that the first half of the question is a solid question. From this point to from this point, it is a solid question. After that, whatever this is there, it is the extra part which we are going to discuss in this video. So, for knowing this development of surfaces, you need to know the basics of solids. So, first uh, go through the solid videos, then come back to this video so that you will understand it clearly. So, first let me give introduction about what is the lateral surface and all. So, you can see this image. In this image, you can see this whatever the red color portion is, this, this is a square prism. So, if there is a paper which is there outside it totally, and if it is removed like this, then whatever this removed paper part is there, that is the lateral surface which are going to develop. And if it is again kept place to it, so whatever the surface, whatever we are there, that one is again kept back to the same position, then we will get the object of this prism again. It can be done for other pieces also, something like cylinder, for a pyramid, for a sphere, for a tetrahedron, for a cone. So basically, if you want to simply understand about the lateral surfaces, you think that there is a paper which is kept around the surface and that is removed totally. Or you can see something like this. See, this is a cuboid. This is the top view and this is the front view. If you are moving or removing all these things or whatever the paper is there around it, if it is removed, that means if it is stretched out, it will be something like this. You think that it is a box. So let me say it is a hollow box, something like a matchbox or an eraser cover. So it will be something like this. So this is basically useful to you when you are talking about creating hollow structures something like box or uh, AC ducts. So there this development of surfaces is very useful to you. So even this one is also, if you talk about a cylinder, so this is the top, this is the bottom, and this is the total place of the cylinder, and this extra part will be used for closing it. You can see this type of thing in the uh, erasers or the uh, sharpener, whatever this uh, cover will be there, but you can see it. There. So that is about lateral surfaces. So come back to the question. So this is the question. We'll try to solve it in the AutoCAD. So now what we'll do is that we'll select uh, X, Y, line. So say something like this, I'm giving some 100 mm. So this is the XY line. And as per the question, this uh, it is resting with its base on horizontal plane. So therefore, I'll start the problem from the horizontal plane. That is this one. So I'll draw a pyramid. Uh, I'll draw a, a pentagon. That is number of sides is five. So I'm using polygon option, and I'm going to the horizontal plane, and I'm pressing five there. And instead of going for using center, I'm using edge option. So E end. So then I give the First one, uh, is it hexagon or pentagon? <laughs> Let us see. Hexagonal. So it is not 5, it is 6. So we will remove it. So select the polygon command and number of sides is 6. Enter. Then uh, what is this? Uh, it's not going for center. I am going for E. Enter. Then this is one position. What is the size? It is 20, right? So 20. So this is 20. So select it and move it down. Lines. This is one type of keeping the position. The second type of is this. It is something like uh, you have an option of keeping it in this way also. move I'm moving it so in these two positions which is correct how do you know you'll come back to the question you can see here such that one of its rectangular faces is parallel to VP. he gave another option here so come back to the question so you can see this is one rectangular face this is second rectangular face third rectangular face so here in this position this particular face and this particular face are both parallel to VP. whereas in this condition we don't have any parallel surface this is with an angle this is with an angle this is perpendicular this is an angle this is an angle in this way we have different things so this is not correct position and this is correct so that is how you'll justify this thing so once this is done then uh, simply we can go for the projection. Since this is uh, resting on horizontal plane, we can simply move it from here to here. Directly after the XY plane, if you go, it is enough. After that, after the projections are completed, we will go for the axis. So once this is done, we will go for the axis. Axis length is 50 mm. So from here, this is base. From the base, it will be 50 mm. So this is 50 mm. And then this side, we don't know this length. From that side itself, we have drawn this. So again, come back to this position. Here also, we can go with 50 mm. Then simply join these two lines. And here also simply join these two lines. So if you want to know which is exact thing and which is projection, that simply what we can do is we can select these things and we can give line weight before itself. So if I give the line weight, you'll understand it beforehand itself. So I'm giving the line weight for this one also. So two line weights are given. Uh, so in this case, also we have uh, extensions. This 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 particular one is also visible. This face is also this edge is also visible. So therefore, here also we should draw straight lines from here to here. Even these two things are also visible to us. I am giving them line weight for that thing also. So here we have. Even if you want, we can draw the axis also. If it is required, we'll draw. If not, uh, we'll try to leave it. 
So if you want to know the axis, it is very simple. I can go with uh, like this position and uh, from here to here and from here to here if I draw and this point will become the axis. Point. If it is necessary, we will draw. If not, we will need not draw. So this is the basic uh, diagram which he has given to us in the question until this point. So there is a hexagonal prism which is which is of uh, 50 mm and 20 mm, 20 mm base and uh, 50 mm axis which is resting on horizontal plane. This is what is drawn. Now he is saying that it is cut by a perpendicular, uh, it is cut by a plane perpendicular to VP inclined at 45 degrees to HP. So here, since it is 45 degrees to HP, this particular thing will be visible to us in the VP. So if we draw a straight line like this from here to here, some say 700 mm, this particular plane, if it is rotated with 45 degrees. And uh, this is kept something like this. So this is the cutting plane. So this cutting plane is of an angle 45 degrees as well as uh, the question states that uh, passing through the right corner of the top face of the prism. So whatever this thing is there, it, it should be passing through the right corner of the prism. This is how it is going to look. That is what he said. Uh, so in the right top corner, it should be passing. So we kept it here. So simply we can go for extending, extend option until this one. So use extend option and uh, select these things and extend it until this line. So now this particular line, whatever it is there, this is the cutting plane. So it will cut this hexagonal prism like this. And whatever this upper portion is there, it is removed. And whatever this bottom portion is there, it is what left out with us. So simply what we can do is that uh, we can remove all these line weights. Uh, by line I am keeping it. Even this one also. Whatever this is there, I am giving by layer. So now whatever this is being removed, whatever this is cut off, it need not have the line weight. So for that sake, I will simply draw these lines again, whatever these lines are that I am drawing them again and whatever these points are there, only those things will be used for the line weight. You can see I am giving the line weight as well as this one is also. So now I think you understood what is there and what is removed. So this particular highlighted part is there with us and whatever this is there, upper part is being removed. So these things also should be projected downwards. No? We can project them downwards by giving the names. So once you draw it, what you have to do is that you have to give the names. So by using multi text, we can give the top phase names as uh, A, B, C, D, and bottom phase names as uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It will be easy for us. So I am giving some line weight. Say some, I'll give you five size. A. Yeah. Okay. And in the bottom, it is uh, 1. Just then this is B, 2. This is C3. This is D4. This is E5. This is F6. So whatever these points are there, we can uh, project it down. Uh, even in the vertical plane also, we will give the names. It will be easy for us. So this is A point. Is a point. This point is a B and F. I mean B dash and F dash. This point is A dash. Then this point is C dash and E dash, and this point is D dash. Similarly, bottom one also we can give the names. This one is M dash. This one is 2 dash, 6 dash. This one is 3 dash, 5 dash. This one is 4 dash. 4 dash. So these are the basic ones. Now whatever the cutting things is there, those things also should be written some names wrong. So in that case, we can give these things as P1, P2, P3, and that we can give the names. So here we give on A1 and 1, on A1 dash and uh, one, uh, A dash and 1 dash uh, edge, we have say P1. On uh, B dash and 2 dash, we have uh, P2. Whereas uh, on uh, F and 6 edge, we have P3. And uh, here also, same way, we have uh, on C and 3, we have P3. And uh, on uh, E and 5, we have P5. And here we have P4. Whatever this P4 and D point is there, D dash point is there. Same because as per the question, it is uh, uh, it is passing through that point. So these are the parts. If you have any doubt, we can go with the specification of point, like this intersection points, I'm giving points. So that uh, the points will be visible to us. 
So these are the points. Uh, if you want, you can reduce the size of the point uh, annotation so that it will be a little bit clear. So this is about the first part of the diagram. So now coming to the second part, we have to develop the surface something like this. So we have to stretch out the paper which is there. How do you stretch out it? Since it is a prism, if I keep a paper here, a paper here, paper here, paper here, what is the total length of the line? It will be like the perimeter of it. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 times into 20. So simply 6 to uh, like a uh, we'll draw a line of 120 mm. And uh, if you divide it into 6 parts by using the command AV and uh, select this one into 6 parts, automatically these points will become the this A, B, C, D, E, F, those points. So simply we can draw a 120 mm line because this is a hexagon and we have 6 sides. So even the paper is of uh, width 50 mm, so that is also done, and the set is 120. So basic structure is run now. So we'll just simply copy it by using copy command at this point and this point. We keep all these things. Give the names to it, it will be easy for us to identify. So here, whenever you are giving, don't give the small letters because these are not projections. These are not projections. So these are basically the original diagrams. So we have A. This is B. The annotation part generally takes a little time, so we have to be a little patient about this. Then this is D, this is E, this is F. What is the left out thing here? This is again A. Similarly, in the above one also, we have a, this is 1. Oh, oh, we are keeping the top one as a ABCD, right? So we'll do one thing. We'll select all this, just move it from this point to this point. Whatever the points above is there, those are all the A. So now bottom parts is all, we are giving numbers, right? So 1. This is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6, this is 1 again. So now these are the edges and A, B, 2, 1 is a face, B, C, 3, 2 is a face. So on these edges we have the points P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. So whatever these things are there, the, we'll, we'll try to replicate it in this uh, surface whatever we have to get here. So A dash to 1 dash, we have P1 point. So here on this, we have P1 point. Here also we have P1 point. How do you replicate it? Simply just copy this one. Select this point, whatever it is there, copy it. Instead of taking this as base point, simply take this as base point and keep it here. And what has happened? We have simply just copied with taking the base point as top edge. So whatever the point is obtained is P1. So this one is uh, P1. This one is P1. Similarly, this last point is also P1. Now coming to the B2 edge, where is B2 edge, B dash and 2 dash, and B dash, 2 dash, we have point P2. So select this point, use copy command, select this as your intersection point and keep it here. We don't have anything else. But coming to the F dash and 6 dash, that is F and 6, here also we have. So at this point also we will be having the same, same dimension, no change in it. So we will select this and keep it at B2 and F6 at a time. But uh, the names will be different. So this, this name will be, this one will be P2. Whereas this one will be P6, not P3. This one will be P6. Coming to the P3 and P5 are on C3 dash, C dash 3 dash, and E dash 5 dash. That is C3 and E5. So if you select this point and use copy command and use base point as this and keep it at this point as well as on this point, whatever the point is obtained, these points will be exactly from this distance to here. So simply just to give them names, annotate them. So whatever this point is P3, whereas whatever this point is, this is P4, P5. And finally, P4. P4 point is nothing but D dash point, that is this point itself. So we can go simply by keeping the point here. So this is nothing but P4 point. So this point can be also said D as well as P4. Now just simply use the polyline command and start from 1, P1, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, I mean P1 again, then come back to 1, then close it at the 1 point. So simply select it, give line weight to it. So whatever this part is there, whatever the highlighted part is there, that is enough for creating this highlighted part. So whatever the unnecessary part is there that is not highlighted here, that can be not needed for creating this truncated prism, whatever this truncated hexagonal prism is there. If you want to simply have this truncated hexagonal prism like this uh, with uh, these things and uh, it is cut with 45 degrees and all, we just simply need this particular highlighted area itself. So if this highlighted area is there, simply we can get it. Now, here we, we also have the bottom part, right? Bottom half is there, that is the closure is also there. If you can see here, we have a closure on the top and closure on the bottom also. 
So here, what happens is that the top part is not needed because top part is cut totally, where the bottom part is there. So bottom part is needed. So simply we can select this and use copy command. And from here, we can keep it either at this point or any place, either from 1 to 2 or 2 to 3 or anything. So it should be there because the bottom part is not cut, whereas the upper part is cut. If supposingly there is a uh, something like this one, if this is the case, then half part is only left. So we need to you, you keep that in the, that one also. I mean, the upper part also should be shown in this. Here it is not necessary. So that is how it will be considered. And uh, since whatever these points are there will be again on these things only, on these things only, we have to show the hatching for this. We have to show the hatching for this. For that, we have the command called H enter. So then this particular box will be appear. So we'll ask add uh, pick points. So we can select this point, this one, and this one, and press enter. And it is asking scale and all. I want to have an uh, ANSI 36, say, something like this. Or, um, and say 31, it will be better. So then press OK. Let me see, it is good. If anything is problem, just simply double click on it. And again, this one will be opening. You can change the scale to say 2. Then OK, it will be a little bigger. So you don't want that one. I want a little bit closer. So I'm pressing 0 0.5. So, it will be like so if you are showing the hatching, it means that it is cut portion, that is truncated portion. So whatever, if you are cutting totally, we have to show. If it is only half cut, only half of this will be hatched and shown. Since it is totally cut from this edge to this edge, I'm showing total truncation. So that is hatching should be shown like this. So in this condition, whatever the annotation should be, uh, dimensioning should be like, uh, we know the dimension of this one, so this should be shown, as well as we know the axis dimension, so that should also be shown, and uh, we know the angle between the uh, plane of cutting, that is, uh, angle should also be shown. So this one, selection of uh, angle from this line to this line, this one also should be shown, that is 45 degrees. So once this is shown, Z enter, E enter, the diagram is finished. So that is the information regarding development of a truncated prism, which is shown in this question. That is, first we need to draw the solid question and on that solid question we need to show the cutting portion that is cutting plane. Once this is done, then we should go for the truncated portion or the development of the surface. So before development of the surface, we have to start complete the solid question, then come to the development of the surface. Why did we take this as 120? Because this is 6 sided, so 6 into side that is perimeter is drawn. If say this is cylinder, we will take directly 2 pi r, that is circumference will be taken. Whereas coming to the pyramid or cone, it will be in a different way. We have to take some calculations there, which will be shown to you in the next video. Bye.